Mm-hmm. So, of course, uh, this is our last basketball uh, topic. Of course, the Lakers are the favorites next season, but next season will be completely different. The NBA is, you know, they're guaranteed for this bubble. This bubble is it. Now they have mm-hmm. to have all 32. I said 32 in, a, in football right now. All 30 <laughs> teams are going to be mm-hmm. in the bubble. Uh, this can be nothing but chaos, especially for those teams who didn't come on the original bubble trip. But no, I expect them to really hold themselves accountable and be really diligent. Of everybody following protocol. But um, mm-hmm. what's your take on bubble takes? Right now, we got the Lakers are the favorite. Second, I want to say is it's not the Heat. I know it's not the Heat. I think no, it's, it's the Clippers. Clippers, yeah. Clippers still. Clippers, yeah. mm-hmm. And Third. then I think after them it's the Nets. Nets. The Nets, yeah. yes. The Nets and uh, somebody else who's still good. The Bucks. The Warriors. The Warriors are coming back too. Warriors. Warriors coming back. Bucks. Yeah. Warriors. You know, Clay and Clay and uh, Stefan are going to be good for next season. And so. they might get James Wiseman or they might get Lonzo Ball. We have to watch the draft. I, the draft is in November, December. You guys keep talking. I'll November. Look it up. In November. Oh, November. Okay, thank you. I clearly see. So, bubble. I think what they're probably going to do is more than likely create like a centralized location on each coast, mm-hmm. and you know just keep you know put all the teams from the west on that side, <gasps> and then for the yeah, east, put right. all the teams from the east that. on yeah. that side, just to make things easier. Instead of having like just one location, it'd probably be better just to like split them up and just kind of do it that. And then once it is the finals, do something like you did in Orlando, and you know just keep it so the push east, it from there. Okay. Here we go. Now we're talking. So the East go to Orlando and the West go to Vegas. I would think hey. Vegas would be a nice yeah. destination. Either that or LA. I mean, they'll probably Vegas. do that or LA. But see, yeah. LA doesn't have that many stadiums that can hold them. Vegas was the second option. That's what yeah, I'm Vegas was the second option because they had that's where they hosted the summer league and everything. Oh um, the summer the summer league is hosted in Orlando and Vegas when mm. they have it. Okay. So yeah, they could probably do something like that. Okay, that's not bad thinking. Not bad thinking at all. Um, but I clearly see the Lakers. I, I'm I'm calling it now. I see the Lakers winning it again. I see I see the Lakers going again too. But uh, I feel like the Nets are going to fall out early next year, just because I think there will be a lot of chemistry issues with them. Just like the whole mm-hmm. Clippers thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the Clippers will figure a lot of things out, but. I think it's still going to be tough for them because they're going to have a new coach coming in and he's going to implant a new um, a new style of play. And I feel like the Warriors, they're going to have a lot to catch up to do because it's it's a whole new team than it was for Clay and Steph it was two years ago. So they're going to have a lot of new young guys, a lot of new faces they're going to have to work with and how to figure out how they, they're going to play with them. But it's going to be... It's going to be different next season. Yeah. Everything's going to be different. The only, I think, consistent thing is going to be the Lakers. Do you think, um, Jacob, do you think uh, Paul George is going to stick around with the uh, with the Clippers? Yeah. or? Yeah, I think he's going to he's gonna try to work everything out with them. They're going to try to work out with the new coach and see how everything works works with them. But I think if, if something doesn't happen well with the Clippers in the next, I'd say, by 2022, Maybe even 2023, they're going to blow that whole team up again. Well, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, man, if that front office doesn't get, you know, its, it's issues together, I feel like if they lose Paul George, they're, they're, it's a wrap mm-hmm. for as far as the West goes. Um, they're they're going to be looking like the Rockets, and the Rockets have been trying to figure things out with James Harden for mm-hmm. six years now. Yeah. They've been switching things up, trying to figure something else out, figure something out with him. Well, isn't uh, is it Mike D'Antoni going out the door? Yeah, they yeah. they already fired him. I think he was, yeah. he was trying to work with um um they tried to put him with the Sixers, but then Doc got that job, right? And then so I don't know where Mike's going now. He needs to go to college like his brother. His brother's at Marsh. <laughs> his brother coaches at the yeah. University of Marshall. Yeah, I've met, I met his brother before at Mar- when they played UNT. Okay, yeah, <laughs> really good, really Somebody. really good guy, nice guy. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. He kind of looks like his brother too. And I didn't know, I didn't know he was. He's the young one, and he looks like the older one, honestly. Uh, <laughs> see, yeah. I, I always thought they were twins, but now I know they're not. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. what was I gonna say? Oh, Dallas Mavericks. I, I love how none of you named the Dallas. Ma- Wait, the greatest. I said greatest. The best international basketball player right now 
that y'all didn't want to name Luca Doncic. Yeah. Yeah. I love Luca. Yeah, well, Luca's going to lead us to victory next year. All we got to do is trade Kristoff. Uh, and I hate to say that, but I don't think no. he, I don't think he got no dog in him. He ain't he, he, he going to dog in him. No, but I like Porzingis. I think he's a pretty good fit. Listen, listen. once you get beat up in your own country, it's a wrap. I, I got I got to send him on somewhere else. I, I can't this might it. be my Mavericks, Mavericks bias talking, but I believe if we would have beat the Clippers this, this year, we would have won the finals. I honestly believe that. I think we could have beat every. I think we could have beat the uh, Nuggets, and I think we could have beat the Lakers. I know it. I can see the Nuggets. I don't know about the Lakers. That's a different beast. Uh, well, who covers Luca? Who in the Lakers gonna cover Luca? Uh, Is it gonna be AD? Nah. Who who did they have on Luca last time? I think they had KCP, uh, Kenny, Tavius Tav- Codwell, oh, Pope. Pope. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know about that one. I don't know, man. I, Luke is scary, man, because you can see the, the the untapped potential in him, and it, yeah. it it's only a matter of time. Yeah, it's only a matter of time before he completely just dominates every single team that he's put up against. I mean, he's already doing it. He's already doing it. Yeah. So you know. All right. Folks. You know how um, you know how they're um each. Ever when Jordan left, there was LeBron. Mm-hmm. You know, we got a couple years of LeBron left. You know, when he leaves, it's gonna be Luca's turn. That's the that's the new face of the league. Yo, I hope Let's so. Because go. last that's, time we're gonna be arguing who the goat is. The last mm-hmm. time y'all said there's gonna be a new LeBron James, y'all said it was Andrew Wiggins, and I have yet, I have yet to see anything <laughs> from Andrew. Who said that? <laughs> no, that's when Andrew Wiggins came out. They said Andrew Wiggins is the next LeBron James, and I ain't seen nothing from him. I was one of those people. Was, I never said that. Oh no, I believe you. I thought he was gonna be Kobe. I swear to God. They kept saying Andrew Wiggins this, Andrew Wiggins that. Listen, man, Andrew Wiggins right now is like the fourth best player on his team. Come on now, like no, I, I, I can't keep I can't keep doing these goat comparisons with people. I, I don't want to hear it no more. I don't want to hear it. The last yeah, Andrew, goat. And Andrew Wiggins is just another DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> just, wow. Speaking of DeMar DeRozan, this is how I found out, um, or this is how I first started following DeMar DeRozan. And this is this takes me back to Master P or why Master P is so great. Uh, DeMar DeRozan had a TV show on Nickelodeon. And I don't know if you remember, Jacob, but... It was a reality TV mm-hmm. show following his AAU basketball team. And guess who else mm-hmm. was on the team? Lil Romeo. Romeo. Lil yeah, Romeo. And that's that's the mm. reason why Lil Romeo got recruited to USC. DeMar DeRozan told mm-hmm. USC, hey, if you're giving me a scholarship, you got to give Romeo a scholarship too or I'm not coming. Boom. Back. So they gave both of them a scholarship. And Romeo is a Pac-12 champion. So, hey, congratulations, Romeo. I know this is a long, this is like a 12-year congratulations later. But, hey. Yeah. Still. Um, Y'all remember the little Romeo show? Great, yeah. yeah. Listen, man. Master P has a hand in everything. A yeah. hand in greatness and everything. That's probably why Toronto traded. Once they realized, oh, you relate to Master P? Hey, we got to trade you. We got to get you out. <laughs> but, again. So, hey, so Toronto, you should really thank Master P for that title. I'm just saying. 